What's up guys, Josh Foscreen here with a little bonus video for you. I just wanted to show you this program that I use to learn songs and transcribe stuff and figure out difficult passages. And I've been using this for years and I just wanna make sure that you guys all know about it because I really think that it should be in every musician's toolkit. It's called Transcribe with an exclamation mark, very important and uh, works on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It's pretty cheap, and uh, like I said, I've been using it for years, and I just wanted to hip you guys to some of the cool stuff you can do with this program in the interest of learning songs uh, more accurately, more efficiently, whatever uh, your purpose may be. So, as an example song here, I have the intro music for my videos that I normally use. <laughs> Etc. Etc. So uh, I just wanted to show you some of the functions that I normally use this program for and then some of the other stuff it can do. Uh, first, main two things that I say I would use this program for is slowing it down. Over here we've got speed markers and you can do more fine tuning, which I'll show you later. But if I want to hear this at 70%, I just click there and without changing the pitch, we can hear it slowed down. There's full speed and there's slowed down. So you can do those changes live without stopping playback. And um, you can hear there is some quality loss uh, when I slow it down here, which you are gonna get. But actually, if you have higher quality audio files coming in, then you will uh, not hear as much quality loss when you slow it down. With some tracks, um, you know, you can go as low as 30 to 50% and still get a, um, you know, something that's decipherable with your ear. And actually another thing I use this for besides just slowing things down so that it's easier to pick them up by ear is I'll actually speed stuff up uh, so that I can learn to play things faster than I need to. And then when I play them at normal speed, they feel easy. So if I tried to learn this at 150, which would be kind of silly, then when you play it at 100, it'll feel more relaxed. So that's a cool little trick too. Uh, second main function I like to use here is looping. We've got some different little loop buttons here. And basically, I just click this uh, button here to start the loop and then click it again to end it. And then I can fine tune it. Get a nice little rhythm there and then I can slow it down also. And that's something I've done a lot to learn difficult chunks. You know, if I'm trying to learn a solo and there's a really fast run, I'll just isolate the fast run and drag it. Besides using the A and B button, you can just drag little loops like that. And then you just hit space bar for playback. And uh, so you can make little loops, however long or short you want them, and then change the speed. And uh, it makes it a lot easier to learn difficult stuff. And I don't feel like it counts as cheating because you still ultimately have to use your ear. Um, so those are two basic functions. If I click the FX button here, it'll take me into um, some more detailed changes I can make. Um, another thing I really love to do when I'm trying to learn bass parts, uh, but you can do this with anything, is to use the EQ function, um, which there's a few presets here. Like say that I wanted to uh, make a play along track for myself um, with less of the bass in the mix, then I would just double click the bass remove here, it'll take out those frequencies. And then if I hit playback, you can hear it takes out a lot of those bass frequencies. Obviously it's just working off the, the general stereo mix. It doesn't actually take out the exact bass instrument. So you kind of have to fine tune that depending on whether you're listening to, you know, Jocko or James Jamerson or Getty Lee, all of their tones kind of reside in a different spectrum. But um, also you can do the flip side of that, just listen to the bass frequencies. And that can help to pick out root notes of chords and that kind of stuff. Um, so that's super helpful. So, so far we've covered EQ and speed. Here's the fine tuning with the speed. So you can get actually get any percentage between 5% and 200%. And also there's a little button here called analog lock, which if you like uh, s slowing stuff down and hearing the pitch change, then... then you can enjoy the analog lock function. Um, but normally you would want to have that unchecked. 
Uh, so that's most of what I use the program for. Some other cool stuff you can do if stuff is, uh, if a track has stuff panned correctly, you can create karaoke tracks for yourself just by using this little phase switch. That's cool. Uh, tuning, this is awesome. If you ever want to play along with the Beatles, you'll find that their recordings are often a few cents uh, sharp or flat. I think usually flat. So what you can do is just stick the recording and transcribe and then adjust the tuning of the track you're playing along with. So rather than having to detune your instrument in order to play along with songs you like, you can just tune them up here. And then if you wanted to, you could actually go to the file menu and export the sound file with those tuning adjustments uh, for future reference. So you don't have to come in to transcribe every time. Also, if you play a song with a band in a different key than is on the original recording, here's the semitone slider. So, you know, say a song's normally in C and your singer wants to do it in A, just drag it down three half steps and there you have it. Um, you know, it'll make stuff sound a little weird. Like, uh, I was doing this with uh, time after time that Cindy Lauper tune and Cindy Lauper's voice three half steps lower sounds kind of like a man, which is funny, but you know, it works for, uh, when you need it. Also, you can get a reference note over here, pretty straightforward. You can change the volume and change the pitch. Uh, you know, if you're ever second guessing yourself on whether you've picked out a note correctly or not, you can use that function. The transposition function I don't really use. It basically just affects this little piano keyboard, what those are tuned to. If you want it to transpose those for you to, you know, trumpet or alto sax or whatever, you can do that. But I don't really find that to be very important. But basically, between the EQing, the looping, and the speed changing, uh, it's very easy to pick out uh, stuff that normally you might have trouble learning by ear. You know, you can even go note by note, just make a little loop, slow it down. and just check yourself note by note if you really want to get a perfect transcription. Um, the last thing I'll show you, I guess, if you want to cheat a little bit, you can um, select a uh, passage or a, a point on the spectrum just by clicking, and it'll show you a frequency spectrum and give you some guesses of what note it thinks that is. Let me expand that a little bit. So uh, let's just uh, go to the top. We'll use a keyboard shortcut there. And you can see that uh, it's having a little trouble with this sample, but uh, with less wacky slap bass stuff, um, you can get a pretty good, like right here, that's actually dead on. I've got a, a D and an F sharp, and that is actually the chord that I was playing on bass. And over here, it'll give you guesses of what chord is happening, which works better, you know, if you're analyzing pop music or something. Uh, and there's a chord in the guitar and then the similar bass note, it might help you figure out what the chord progression is. So that's some sort of cheater stuff you can use. The way I normally use this program is with all that stuff just switched off and I don't really use the piano keyboard very much and I just kind of keep this like that. Uh, what else do I want to show you? You can uh, easily zoom in and out on the... Um, how wide the, the track is. You can zoom to selection. You can just do a fit whole file thing. You can change the vertical zoom on the waveforms. Uh, another cool thing is if you're working off something that's really quiet, you can actually just jack up the volume to 200% really easily. And then you've got a speed slider down here and a tuning slider down here. So, and there's a lot of customization you can do with, with keyboard shortcuts and you can even use external pedals and stuff if you're really serious about your transcribing. So to get this program, all you need to do is, uh, I put a link in the description and you will note that this is an affiliate link, which means that uh, when you decide to buy transcribe, which you don't have to do because there's a 30 day trial, but when you do eventually decide that it is an amazing program and that it's worth $39, which is all it costs. Um, that affiliate link means that I will get a cut of uh, the the uh, price when you pay for it. It doesn't add any, doesn't change the price at all. It just means that I get a little commission. So it's a nice way for you to help support the Josh Foster Green YouTube channel if that's something that uh, you care about. And this program is just awesome. I mean, at the very least, check out the 30-day trial and just uh, see how much it helps your song learning process. I really feel that it's uh, contributed a lot to my musical development over the years, and I do not think that it's cheating because, you know, I mean, there's the spectrum and the note guessing stuff that you can use if you're really stuck, but um, 
using EQ and speed changes and looping, you're still relying on your ear at the end of the day. So I think that it does continue to contribute to your overall development as a musician while taking advantage of the fine tools of the 21st century. So uh, that's it. Check out Transcribe. It's an awesome program. Big thanks and cheers to the guy who developed this. It's really just a great program. And I will see you guys next week for another bass lesson. Peace out. Peace out.